ettiğimiz düzeni iyice inşa etmeliyiz ki tüm hükümetleri yıkabilelim ve tüm dini düzenleri zayıflatabilelim. Sizinle bir Siyonist devlet kurulacak. Dinler ortadan kalkacak ve ateizm kazanacak. Here are the facts. General Albert Pike was born in December of 1809. He was exceptionally bright and allegedly accepted into Harvard, although he didn't have the money to attend. Today, Pike is remembered as a pioneer in the early courts of Arkansas, a Confederate officer during the Civil War, and a central figure in the development of Freemasonry. He's still the only Confederate officer with a statue in Washington, D.C. History is divided on Pike. He's been called a genius, a villain, and an occultist. But that's not all there is to this story. Some people believe Albert Pike was more than just a lawyer and a general. Much, much more. Here's where it gets crazy. Depending on who you ask, Albert Pike may have been the leader of the Ku Klux Klan, a Satan worshiper, or even the king of the Freemasons. In The Unseen Hand, A. Ralph Epperson argues that a great deal of historical events have been planned in advance. Epperson believed that Albert Pike was at the center of this conspiracy and the highest ranking Mason in the United States, or possibly the world. Pike is also accused of being a member of the Illuminati and a harbinger of a coming New World Order. The stories about Pike's alleged occultism and villainy are both varied and, to a large degree, impossible to prove. For example, some claimed he had a magic bracelet that allowed him to commune with the devil. Others claimed that he helped found the Ku Klux Klan, or that President Andrew Johnson considered Pike his Masonic superior. Masonic databases deny the allegations about Pike and the Klan, but that hasn't stopped conspiracy theorists, especially anti-Masonic theorists, from making this claim. Anti-Masonists believe that Freemasons have destroyed most of the records proving Pike's involvement in sinister affairs. However, one claim takes attention over all the others. In 1871, Pike allegedly sent a letter to an Italian political activist named Giuseppe Mazzini, in which he describes a curious dream about three world wars. In this letter, Pike apparently outlines specific events leading up to World Wars I and II. Additionally, Pike pushed for the organization of communism, Nazism, Zionism, and other international movements as tools to escalate these conflicts. According to this letter, the Illuminati will provoke a third world war by creating religious conflicts in the Middle East. After this war is ended, the letter claims that nihilist and atheist will create bloody turmoil, leading the world's disillusioned masses to follow Lucifer. For those who believe this conspiracy theory, Pike's letter accurately predicts the course of world events. However, bir şey olmaz dersiniz ya. Size Mason teşkilatının kurallarını yeniden belirleyen bir adamın mektubunu okuyalım. Bu mektup yıllar evvel yazıldı paşalar. Okuyun Mustafa Paşa. Amacımıza ulaşmak için öncelikle bir dünya savaşı çıkartmalıyız. Bu sebeple Rusya'da çarı zayıflatıp ateizmi ve komünizmi hakim kılmalıyız. Ajanlarımız vasıtasıyla Britanya İmparatorluğu ve Alman İmparatorluğu arasında gerginliği körükleyerek savaşa zemin hazırlamalıyız. Ve birinci dünya savaşı sonrasında komünist düzeni iyice inşa etmeliyiz ki tüm hükümetleri yıkabilelim ve tüm dini düzenleri zayıflatabilelim. Ardından ikinci bir dünya savaşını çıkarmalıyız ve bunu gerçekleştirmemiz için faşistler ve siyonistler arasında savaşla sonuçlanacak bir harp oluşturmalıyız. İsimleri nazi olacak olan faşistleri savaş sonunda yok etmeli ve savaş sonrası Filistin'de bir siyonist devlet kurulacak. Üçüncü dünya savaşını çıkarmamız için 
İslam aleminin liderleri ve Siyonistler arasında ajanlarımız vasıtasıyla ayrı düştükleri konular üzerinden gerginlik çıkartmalıyız. Ve bu hengame içinde diğer milletleri bu konuda fiziksel, ahlaki, ruhsal ve ekonomik olarak çökmeleri için mücadeleye zorlamalıyız. Üçüncü savaş İslam alemi ve Siyonistler arasında olacak. Ve bu savaş Müslüman dünyası ve İsrail devletinin birbirlerini yok edecekleri şekilde dizayn edilmeli. Ve bu hengame içinde diğer milletleri bu konuda fiziksel, ahlaki, ruhsal ve ekonomik olarak çökmeleri için mücadeleye zorlamalıyız. Nihilistlerin ve ateistlerin önlerini açmalıyız. Üçüncü Dünya Savaşı sonrası dinler ortadan kalkacak ve ateizm kazanacak. Ve müthiş bir sosyal çöküş provoka etmeliyiz ki böylece bu kanlı kargaşa ve vahşetin doğurduğu korku içinde mutlak ateizm etkisi ortaya çıksın. Tövbe Burada yüz yıllık bir kehanetten bahsediliyor paşalar. Bizim mücadelemiz buna mani olmaktır. Welcome back True Seeker. Just made an observation this morning that I want to share. We've been talking about Albert Pike's letter to Mazzini, the second leader of the Illuminati, dated August 15th, 1871 about three world wars and of course august 15th is the jesuit order's birthday but that letter was actually dated on the jesuits 337th birthday and the reason it matters that it was the 337th birthday is that's the 68th prime number and as we know world war one began july 28th 1914 a date was 68 numerology 7 plus 28 plus 19 plus 14, 68. World War II also began September 1st, 1939, a date with 68 numerology, 9 plus 1 plus 19 plus 39, 68. Some are saying what's began with Russia and Ukraine is the start of World War III. That military conflict officially began February 24th, 2022, a date with 68 numerology, 2 plus 24 plus 20 plus 22, 68. And remember, this 68 business, it goes back to Art of War, the military text translated by the Jesuit priest Father Ramiad. Again, the letter about three world wars is on the Jesuit order's birthday. The law... Jerusalem. Unbelievable. Let's get to this message that Iran sent to Israel on Saturday night, stressing that it does not want further escalation in the in the war. And it said that if it sees Israel go in in this ground attack, which we are expecting, uh, they will have to intervene and Israel will face a quote unquote uh, earthquake. Frightening. This is the nightmare scenario we've always uh, been worried about. Uh, Israel, there's no question they're going to go into Gaza. It's their 9-11. They want justice. They're going to go in and take out Hamas, which is like ISIS. They, you know, I went to that kibbutz where they killed all the little children there and decapitated them. It's going to happen. So then what is Iran going to do? Are they just going to help their proxies like Hezbollah and, and others? Or are they going to get directly involved in this conflict. Either way, Maria, you know, my committee is charged with war and peace. My committee has the power to declare war or issue an authorized use of military force. We don't want to do that. But if this escalates, that's what worries me the most. Tell me what you're referring to. Are you saying that the United States will have to get involved? Well, if we want to stop, say, Israel from obliterating Iran, uh, yes, and that would be a question for the American people. Uh, do we want to get involved to defend Israel? Uh, right now, we're just providing weapons and training. We're not involved. We're not firing our, our, our missiles from our destroyer ships in the Mediterranean. 
Uh, but the minute that happens, it does trigger the War Powers Act. And so uh, that's why we have to be so careful here and pray that it does not escalate to that level um, because uh, what would follow after that would be very um, bloody. Uh, might say. And just to totally clear it up, here's what he said when they're like, are you saying we should bomb Iran? Here's what he have to say. The money financing terrorism comes from Iran. It's time for this terrorist state to pay a price for financing and supporting all this chaos. Yes, if you're the Iranians, if we're up to me, this war escalates, I'm coming after you. I think this is what I'm trying to clarify here because I, I, I'm wondering- Us and Israel, us and Israel. Us, the United States no, and no, Israel- No, no, I will be crystal clear. The United. So let me a just let me just um, let me just understand yeah, you. Just sorry. to be clear, you're saying yeah. that you would want the United States and Israel to bomb Iran, even in the absence you of direct it. evidence of their involvement in yeah. this attack. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. A few years ago, I stood here with a red marker to show the the curse, a great curse, the curse of a nuclear Iran. But today, today I bring this marker to show a great blessing, the blessing of a new Middle East between Israel, Saudi Arabia, and our other neighbors. We will not only bring down barriers between Israel and our neighbors, we'll build a new corridor of peace and prosperity that connects Asia through the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, to Europe. This is an extraordinary change, a monumental change, another pivot of history. But I also believe that we must not give the Palestinians a veto over new peace treaties with Arab states. Sanctions must be snapped back. And above all, above all, Iran must face a credible nuclear threat. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me in. He said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, you, we've made the decision. We're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if... If the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. I said, is it classified? He said, yes, sir. I said, <laughs> I said, well, don't show it to me. And I saw him a year or so ago, and I said, you remember that? He said, sir, I didn't show you that memo. I didn't show it to you. düzeni iyice inşa etmeliyiz ki tüm hükümetleri yıkabilelim 
ve tüm dini düzenleri zayıflatabilirim. Sizinle bir Siyonist devlet kurulacak. Dinler ortadan kalkacak ve ateizm kazanacak.